thank you very much. I want to start by thanking the Supreme Court for its unanimous decision today. It was a very important decision. We're very well crafted. And I think it will go a long way toward bringing our country together, which our country needs. And uh, they worked long, they worked hard, and frankly, they worked very quickly on something that will be spoken about 100 years from now and 200 years from now, extremely important. Essentially, you cannot take somebody out of a race because an opponent would like to have it that way. And it has nothing to do with the fact that it's the leading candidate, whether it was the leading candidate or a candidate that was well down on the totem pole. You cannot take somebody out of a race. The voters can take the person out of the race very quickly, but a court shouldn't be doing that. And the Supreme Court saw that very well. And I really do believe that will be a unifying factor because while most uh, states were thrilled to have me, there were some that didn't, and they didn't want that for political reasons. They didn't want that because of poll numbers, because the poll numbers are very good. We're uh, beating President Biden in almost every poll. New York Times came out yesterday with a very big uh, poll for us. So they, uh, they didn't like that, and you can't do that. You can't do what they tried to do. And hopefully Colorado, as an example, will unify. I know there's tremendous support. They've, they brought our support up very strong in Colorado because people thought, people in Colorado thought that was a terrible thing that they did. And while we're on the subject, and another thing that will be coming up very soon will be immunity for a president. And not immunity for me, but for any president. If a president doesn't have full immunity, you really don't have a president because Nobody that is serving in that office will have the courage to make, in many cases, what would be the right decision, or it could be the wrong decision. It could be, in some cases, the wrong decision, but they have to make decisions, and they have to make them free of all terror that can be rained upon them when they leave office or even before they leave office. And some decisions are very tough. I can tell you that, as a president, that some decisions to make are very tough. I took out ISIS. And I took out some very big people from the standpoint of a different part of the world. Uh, two of the leading terrorists, probably the two leading terrorists ever that we've ever seen in this world. And uh, those are big decisions. I don't want to be prosecuted for it. Uh, another president wouldn't want to be prosecuted for it. It had a tremendously positive impact. It stopped everything cold. Then sometimes you have to make those. They were tough decisions. Sometimes you have to make decisions like that. When you make a decision, you don't want to have your opposing party or opponent or even somebody that just thinks you're wrong bring a criminal suit against you or any kind of a suit when you leave office. I have that right now at a level that nobody's ever seen before. I have rogue prosecutors and I have rogue judges. I have judges that are out of control. And it's a very unfair thing for me, but um, serving perhaps as a uh, sample to others of what should not be happening when you make good decisions. And in my case, the economy was great. We didn't go into any wars. We totally defeated ISIS. We provided the largest tax cuts in history. We provided the largest regulation cuts in history. But think of it, no wars. We beat ISIS 100 percent of the caliphate. Then there were no wars. We, we did a job that was great, but I, maybe I wouldn't have done that. The caliphate defeating them was very powerful. It was going to take four years. It took me four months. But it was a very strong uh, dictum that I gave. I said, get them. Defeat them. End it. We were fighting for 20 years against ISIS, and we did it very quickly. I don't want to be prosecuted. In that case, it worked out very well. There will be some things that perhaps don't work out so well, but I don't want to be prosecuted prosecuted because I decided to do something that is very much for the good of the country and actually for the good of the world. A president shouldn't have that on his mind, and he has to have a free and clear mind when he makes very big decisions. Or it's going to be nothing more than a ceremonial post. You'll be president, it'll be a wonderful thing, and you won't do anything because you don't want to be hit by your opponent or hit by somebody else, because who wants to leave office and go through what I've gone through? I'm being prosecuted by Biden. 
my opponent, because every one of these things, whether it's Fannie Willis or Bragg, these are local and state, but they're in total coordination with the White House. You can't do that. It shouldn't be done. done. I mean, a thing like that, uh, in the case of the DA's office, they put one of the top people, maybe the second person, in the Manhattan DA's office to get Trump. They had a Hillary Clinton lawyer leave the law firm, very prestigious, big law firm, leave the law firm to go into the DA's office to get Trump, Pomerantz, Mr. Pomerantz. So he goes in to become a prosecutor, worked for the Democrat Party and Hillary Clinton, goes in to prosecute Donald Trump at a local level, in total coordination with the Department of Justice, meaning Biden. And then you have the Fannie Willis, or as she would say, Fani, Fani, F-A-N-I, but Fani. And she hired somebody, knew the person long before this horrible prosecution took place. And she went out and she paid him an unbelievable amount of money, more money than he ever had dreamt possible, much more money than other people that are, that do that for a living. He never did it at all, had no experience in it at all. And they had obviously a conflict. We don't have to go into that, but they were able to get a lot of money because it was a high profile person. Me, I'm a very high profile person. So they were able to pay him close to a million dollars when he was not equipped to do the job and she's not equipped to do the job and that case should end immediately. That case is so conflicted, nobody's ever seen anything like it. And then you have deranged Jack Smith, who's a Trump hater and represents all the Trump haters. And he's going wild. He's just a wild man. He's been overturned unanimously by the Supreme Court. Went after other people over the years. He's had great failure. But he's uh, mean, he's nasty, he's unfair. And the judges on these cases, they're all Trump haters. Other than we have maybe one or two that I think can be fair. But you look at New York, what's happened. I mean, these people have tremendous hatred. You can't do this to a president. And again, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about in the future. A president has to be free. A president has to be, if the president does a good job, I did. Some people would say a great job. But if the president does a good job, a president should be free and clear and frankly celebrated for having done a good job. Not indicted four times and not gone after on a civil basis and not uh, demanded to be to pay hundreds of millions of dollars in fines on something that was absolutely perfect, where there were no victims, where the financial statements were absolutely flawless, where you have disclaimer clauses. I mean, nobody's ever had a thing like this. I wasn't given a jury. And I had a clubhouse judge just come up with this number on a perfect loan and very conservative financial statements. But even at that, if you look, the disclaimer says, don't rely on the financial statements in any way, shape, or form. Go out and do your own work. The bank in question had the most sophisticated lawyers in the world, frankly, a very top, one of the top law firms anywhere in the country. And they can defend themselves. What guys like uh, Bragg and uh, Letitia James and Fani and uh, deranged Jack Smith, what they should be doing is fighting violent crime. And that would lead me to the end. I will say that President Biden, number one, stop weaponization. Fight your fight yourself. Don't use prosecutors and judges to go after your opponent, to try and damage your opponent so you can win an election. Our country is much bigger than that. The other thing I say to President Biden, close the borders now. This is not sustainable for our country. It's not sustainable for our cities. Our country is under siege. This is a violent thing that you've done. And many people are dying. Many, many people are dying. They die on the trip up. They die going through the border. And they die in our country. But many of the people coming up are from prisons and jails, from mental institutions and insane asylums. Many are terrorists. You see it. Many, many are terrorists. And I believe the real number that we have right now is probably closer to 15 million people. And by the time the term ends, 
I believe the President's term ends. I believe you'll be at close to 20 million people. That's almost larger than any state in the Union. Our country, it is not sustainable. Many of these people are tough. Many of these people are bad. They come from some of the roughest countries in the world and some of the roughest prisons. We have prisons in the Congo, in Africa, coming. We have people coming from all parts of the Middle East. They're coming from Yemen, and yet you are bombing Yemen. You have to stop. You have to close the border. You have absolute authorization. You don't need Congress. I had the safest border in the history of our country, and I didn't use Congress for it. And then I built hundreds of miles of wall. And the reason I built it and how I built it was I considered it an invasion of our country. And I took the money from the military. And the Army Corps of Engineers did it with me. And we did a great job. And we had the safest border we've ever had. And now we have the most unsafe border anywhere in the world at any time. There's never been a border like this at any country anywhere in the world. They would have fought with sticks and stones to stop the horrible situation that's occurring. Our people can't stand it, and the people coming in really can't stand it because they're dying. Many are dying on the trip up, and they're dying in the country. And also, many of the people are criminals, and they're doing tremendous harm. I call it migrant crime. It's migrant crime. It's a new category of crime. They're hurting our country horribly, and we've become a laughing stock all over the world. So I say respectfully to President Biden, you have the authorization right now. I did it. I didn't go to Congress and say, do I have the right to close? I fought Congress on it. Close the borders. You can do it right now. You have everything. Use my policies. My policies were great. Everybody said it. Use my policies. So just to finish, I have great respect for the Supreme Court, and I want to just thank them for working so quickly and uh, so diligently and so brilliantly. And again, this is a unifying factor. Everybody now is together, and they can go after me as a politician. They can go after me with votes, but they're not going to go after me with that kind of lawsuit that takes somebody out of a race who's leading in this case, but even if the person wasn't leading. And I want to thank you all for being here. Do we have any questions? Yes, Mr. President, uh, the poll numbers are massive for you going into Super Tuesday. We found that a lot of people that were agnostic to politics in general see these legal cases against you. They see what how life was back under a Trump administration. Do you think that's the key to pull some of these independent voters into this next election, seeing that these legal cases are unfair, they have no merit, and also the poll numbers in their life before Trump. It's such an interesting question because historically a thing like what I've been going through would have hurt a political party or a political candidate terrifically. You wouldn't even run. You wouldn't be able to run. You'd get out. And this has happened over many years, many times. In this case, I mean, the polls show that uh, I'm much more popular than I was before weaponization. It's been weaponized like it's never been. This is for third world countries. This isn't for us. Biden ought to drop all of these things. And frankly, he may do better if he does, because people would say, wow, that was very reasonable. Look, they're all the state, the city, and the federal. They're all coordinated. Fannie Willis's lover spent hours and hours at the White House, I guess with White House counsel and with DOJ, plotting out this plan. Nobody talks about that. They're all, uh, they're all coordinated with the White House. It's weaponization. Never been done in this country. It's been done in third world countries, banana republics, never in this country. So I really believe what they should do is really go all the way, go out and stop all of this nonsense. They're nonsense cases and everybody sees it. You just look at Atlanta. It's such an embarrassment to Georgia what's happening there. But uh, Jack Smith, I don't think is any better. Letitia James is terrible. She campaigned on, I will get Trump, I will get Trump. And then it goes before a Trump-hating judge. I mean, the whole thing is a rigged deal. And the public understands it. I'm lucky that I'm able to explain it to the public, because if you weren't able to explain it, the public wouldn't know. They'd believe what they see. So I don't want to win this way. Look, I want to win based on my policies are better. We're going to cut taxes. We're going to get interest rates down. You're going to be able to buy homes again. I mean, you can't buy a home today. The interest rates are so high. 
I want to win on safe borders. I want to stop wars. I want to stop the war in Ukraine with Russia. I want to stop what's happening in Israel. Israel would have never been attacked if I were president. Ukraine would have never, ever been attacked if I was president. Um, you wouldn't have had inflation. Inflation was caused by high energy prices. I had low energy prices. I would have kept them there very easily. And it probably maybe caused the war with Ukraine because Putin became rich all of a sudden. It went up so much. And I, I watched President Biden talking about Putin. Putin became very rich because at $100 a barrel, he's got so much money to fight a war. At $40 a barrel, he doesn't have the money to fight a war. But he wouldn't have done it anyway because I told him not to. So I just uh, want to thank all of you for being here. I think it's a very big day for America. I think it's a very big day for liberty. And I think it's uh, just a great day for this country. Again, I hope it's unifying like I think, but it is. It's a big step toward unification. I hope that the justices, because they'll be working on some other cases, but one in particular, presidents have to be given total immunity. They have to be allowed to do their job. If they're not allowed to do their job, it's not what the founders wanted, but perhaps even more importantly, it will be terrible for our country. Thank you all very Mr. much. President, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What would you do to prevent Mr. President, Alabama from responsible for access to IDF? Are you going to support a 15-week federal?